malevolent environmental spirit is not the right translation, but Namande uh, are really full on. Um, and it's what's depicted in them. You know, you'll see ones with serpent like heads with big tongues or hands with seven fingers coming for your big eyes or big mouth or uh, four legs or four arms. And, you know, um, there's one which has these breasts with nipples like this long, you know. And the thing is that it's what it's, what it's about. That's, that's what's being depicted. Um, there's no word for art in language. There's no word for artist. Yeah? There's words for markings and the type of markings that they are, like a law marking or sorcery marking or you know, day-to-day -day learning marking. Um, but there's no word for art or artist. Okay, That's a really alien thought process. Um, but that's our word that we use. <coughs> Um, so yeah, it's really specific, that Namande artwork. They're really full on though. They're the reason that you don't wander away from camp at night. They're the reason women walk around in groups together. They're the reason uh, kids don't muck around in general. Because uh, they will, they're all in through that environment. Um, they tie in very closely with the moieties of Yiritya and Dua, uh, which are the two moieties of this landscape. Um, and they reinforce that kinship law. Okay, so if the Namande gets you, no one's ever going to find you. Okay, um, no matter how well you can track them. And then with the little ones, when the Namande get them, they don't kill them. They they change them into more Namande. Yeah, yeah. So they're really full on. You will not see artwork like that anywhere else, guys, in public access. Nowhere else. So very interesting <coughs> styles, uh, Namande. Um, you've even got one of the Nahayungi there. Nahayungi's uh, creation. Um, so there's no Yungi artwork that her name is Algaigo. Um, she ties in with the Gui book, the, the Banksia. Yeah? She's got Banksia on her head, but that ties in with Gunak, which is the fire laws. So that's pretty hardcore law. You know? So uh, Algaigo is there. But again, I mean, it talks very lightly on these signs. And when I was here with the TOs, or traditional owners, mm -hmm. speaking for the country, we were asking about it. And it's like, well, the thing is that, you know, these signs are talking about bloody dilly bags for carrying livers and kidneys and that sort of thing. You can have tourist mob asking about that. They're like, yeah, is that saying I want that sign? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, right. And they said, yeah, well, that will break you. There's your answer. Okay. That's as much as you can. So the thing is that they are really full on. That is like nothing else you'll see. Okay. Sorcery artwork, malevolent environmental spirits, enforcers of kinship law, enforcers of the moieties within the landscape. All ties in, really full on stuff. And that way is much nicer and more relaxed, but there's quite sexually explicit <coughs> stuff up the top. Whenever I come here, I always see new stuff. I love this art site, because this is the most people I've seen in this art site for maybe two years. Okay, <coughs> so congratulations or commiserations, I'm not sure which. Um, that is a lump of something called hematite or hematite. Yeah, yeah. This one here, <coughs> it's essentially a lump of iron, guys. And when that one, is ground up and then mixed with blood or certain saps um, and then placed on Kambolji sandstone, it actually goes directly on the Kambolji, goes into the rock anywhere from 7 to 10 millimetres. That one there. So it's the equivalent of tattooing the rock, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's staining or bleaching that rock permanently. And they're not like big quarries or holes full of colour. Um, they tend to be up here, they tend to be a bend in a river. Yeah, so a bend in a river is where you'll find pipe clay. Yeah? Hematite tends to be washed down the river. So after the wet has passed, a lot of binning go to certain creek lines which are known for certain colours. But yeah, it's the hematite's the key to the longest continual art systems in the world. Yeah, yeah. So do they also travel to bring in other colours or Yeah, yeah. Trade oh, them trade them for it. Yeah, if you don't so if in my country if I got heaps of yellow but I've got none of this, yeah man, I'll get a heap of that and I'll trade for that. By the 20,000 year mark, just after the 20,000 year mark, you got these guys. They're called the dynamic figures. They're a really exciting style. They, uh, we get a real big insight into their accoutrement and their weaponry. They've got, always got these big, long headdresses. They sometimes have pubic aprons, big grass bustle skirts, forearm bands, necklaces, anklets. We get such an insight into these people. We get to see their boomerangs that they hold in their hand and their single shaft spears. No bondocks, no spear throwers. Okay. And that's, um, we've got other things like long-beaked echidnas. Long-beaked echidnas haven't been around for at least 15,000 years. You find them up in the high country of New, uh, New Guinea. 
All right, so they're still around, but they haven't been in Australia for around 15,000 years as far as our fossil evidence goes, yet there they are within the art sequences. Okay. Um, these guys come down to here, these more simplistic figures, they're still holding the boomerangs, they still have single shaft spears, but they start having this hooked stick in their hand. Now, no one calls it a bondock, it's called a fighting pick. Okay, but they all start carrying these hooked sticks. Okay, it's interesting. Still got the same big headdresses, still got the same big pubic aprons, but they become much more rigid and simplified. There's a style between there and there where these guys start losing their musculature, okay, and start getting more stick-like, but they're still running, but then they slowly start standing more and more rigid till you get to these guys, which are rigid, standing tall, but they've still got the same accoutrement. Then we have the running figures, these ones here. You can see some of these at Ubi. They're always very, you can always tell the sex of them. The women, it's what I've put on here, always got two proportionate breasts on them. The men, you can always see their sex hanging down. But they are always running, okay? They go back to this musculature that we can see. But sometimes they're almost horizontally running. Other times they look like they're falling down a rock face. Yeah, but they're very expressive. What they're running to or from, we have no idea. Okay. They've also got a very limited area. They are only between Kumparanya, which is over in Arnhem Land, in Yalak Hill, and they come as far across as Cannon Hill. So that's when you're standing at Ubi, those ridge lines you're looking at over the Nadab floodplain. So that's only around about, I don't know, as the crow flies, about 60 k's maximum. That's a very small area, but that's the only place you find these figures. Very interesting. We then come down to yam figures. These guys are really interesting because yams... Yeah, we can, we can pinpoint yams because yams need at least 1 to 1.2 metres of rain annually in order to grow. And we've only started having around about 1 plus metre of rain per year, around about the 10,000 year mark. So we can pinpoint yam figures to 10,000 years onwards. And it's also believed that those yams, those certain species, were actually brought over here on the people who migrated here as a food source and propagated into Australia. And while we're on that point, guys, um, there is still yam ceremony for increase and propagation of species still done in Arnhem Land today. So what you're looking at is the longest continual held belief spiritual ceremonial systems in the world. It's pretty mad stuff. So the thing is, things are starting to change now. Again, on the new one I'm making, this is where I've put fish and turtles and crocodiles because that's when fish, turtles and crocodiles start turning up. Arnhem Land Plateau is more than 450 k's from the coast up here, but by the time you get down to 10,000 years, that sea level's getting closer and closer. Yeah, so we start seeing seafood in the diet of this stone country people. Mm. All right. um, we've also got other extinct species like our thylacines. Yeah, Tassie tigers, they were all through Australia 5,000 odd years ago plus. Okay. Um, but at around 5,000 years ago, new migration wave brought with them a, uh, a new hunting weapon namely a dog. So those dingoes just outbred and outcompeted thylacines off the mainland of Australia. Thylacines were quite comfortably down in Van Diemen's land, known as Tasmania, um, for quite a happy time, about 5,000 years, and then white fellas turned up in 1803, put a one pound bounty on their head. Okay. Um, after that one, by the 5,000 year mark, this is where we start seeing light x-ray. So we start <coughs> seeing suggestions of body parts, internal bones. <coughs> Light x-ray turns into x-ray descriptive. X-ray descriptive is an anatomy lesson. You've got the, the liver, the lungs, the kidneys, the, the optic nerves that go to the eyeballs. Like everything is in there. And they used beeswax from 4,000 years onwards to highlight certain joints and lymphatic points of the body. It's really interesting. All right. And then we get down to here and we got contact. So we start seeing boats, we start seeing guns, we start seeing axes, we start seeing all this stuff to do with contact. Start seeing boss man walking around with his big hat, his boots and his hands in his pocket, the pipe hanging out of his mouth, you know. All this contact stuff, hot air balloons, uh, aeroplanes, yeah, boats. So that one there, okay, like I say I'm working on a bit more of a technical one, but that's a really good snapshot to try and get your heads around what it is that is the longest continual visual representation of any people on this earth. And that is the Arnhem Land Plateau traditions 
okay, which Kakadu National Park protects 15% of the Arnhem Land Plateau. So how much is out there, guys, that we have no idea about? We only see this much. Okay, and we've got 5,680 registered rock art sites in Kakadu. Uh -huh. This is one. <laughs> it is phenomenal stuff. The saturation levels of this area are unbelievable. Okay, and the, the thing that gets me because and I've worked all through desert country with petroglyphs and stuff, and petroglyphs are much older than 20,000. They go all the way up past 30,000. They're the oldest maps on earth. They're the oldest this, that, the other thing. There's a lot of that. And you'll see that, especially in Africa with the sand bush people and up in the Drakensbergs and some of the petroglyphs there. Oldest, oldest, all these sort of claims. The key word here, guys, is longest continual. Because we can track it, as I've just very quickly done, from 20,000 down the environmental changes the different things these ones here the yam figures this is these are the first anthromorphs those those that top bit just that little thing what look like their heads with funky hair those are yams those are the shapes of yams they've got the growth points of yams but they develop arms and legs and bodies this is an anthropomorphic point this is a, a, a yam with a body you know these guys up here have the first zoom all. So you have scenes where these guys are running and hunting and in amongst them are human figures with kangaroos' heads. The, the, there's so many firsts in this, but the key word, forget the oldest, forget the first, forget the this, the key word, the real mind-blowing one, is continual visual representation of people on this earth. It is phenomenal. Thank <laughs> you.